Next up, best recovery spots, which if you're playing a lot of tournaments or you're playing a lot of cash or you're playing a lot of poker, you know, you're going to need to recover. Las Vegas is the city that never sleeps. Uh, everything's available 24 seven. It's easy to just indulge in everything, but it's important to recover if you want to have the energy to do it the next day. There's a reason why most people spend two to three days in Vegas and not two to three weeks or two to three months. And this is where recovery comes in. So the first thing that I found to be super helpful, uh, Tony Gregg's one of the people who got me into this. I just found it to be a complete life changer is floating, uh, float therapy, sensory deprivation tanks. Just it's, it's a tank you go into, it shuts out the rest of the outside world. There's no noise. There's no light. There's just this water that is loaded with Epsom salts. So you float on it. You can literally relax all your muscles and you'll float. And there's also magnesium in the water, which helps the muscles relax further and helps to repair the body. So you get in this deep, restful, meditative state and your body just goes into an amazing state of repair. So if you've got lots to think about it, you can run through your thoughts more quickly. If you're just exhausted, you'll, you'll rest. If your muscles are tense, they'll relax. It's just a completely safe environment where you can recharge completely. Um, so currently there are two places I know in town. One is called the True Rest Float Spa. Uh, really, really good float center. It's next to uh, one of the yoga studios and a really good restaurant called the Go Vegan Cafe. Uh, formerly Las Vegas Float Center is now True Rest Float Spa. And then another float center I found across town is the NV Float Therapy Center, which is also next to a healing salt cave. So cool thing there. Um, but, you know, that's if you want a full reset, you want to shut out the world. Maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want to be in a room with some nice people um, working on the breath, working on movement, really getting into the body. So if you aren't ready to just shut off, you know, like when you try to meditate and your mind is racing, you're like, oh, I'm so bad at this meditation stuff, then an active meditation can be nice. You know, something with movement and where we synchronize the breath. So this is where yoga and qigong are great. Um, syncing up the breath to movement and moving at a slow pace does wonders for calming down a racing mind. And wonders for healing a body that's been sitting all day, which is just begging to get some movement. Um, and being around positive people is very healing, which you'll usually find at yoga and Qigong classes. These are environments where people are just wanting to feel better, be healthier, be at their best, be at their optimal. And so it's a very welcoming environment. My favorite yoga studios in Vegas, after going to them for since 2012, I think we started doing yoga out there. So seven years. Uh, is True Fusion. They have a studio in both Summerlin and Henderson. Uh, 103 Degrees, awesome studio in Summerlin and Vegas Hot, which is next to the Float Center. So if you want a really good combo, do a yoga class, eat some food, and then hop in the float tank. Boom. Uh, in terms of Qigong and Tai Chi, I found a place called Naturally Organic, which is also in Summerlin. All these places are west of the Strip. And they have classes every day and are just really welcoming people. Uh, lots of healthy stuff there. There's also some other studios I practiced at. RYK is great if you're into Kundalini Yogi and um, Dawn Yoga if you're into some like intense Korean style yoga, which is um, it's very energizing. It's pretty much martial arts. Um, it's good stuff. Next, my favorite thing, uh, speaking of healing, is spa. Spa life, this is how I Vegas. Um, I found the Imperial Spa is kind of the secret spa that uh, the massage therapists go to because it's only like 20 bucks for a day pass. Whereas all casino spas are going to be 40, 50, upwards of $100 for a day pass. So in terms of um, bang for your buck, which we know Vegas is all about maxing your value in, the Imperial Spa is the best way to go. And then if you have more money to invest or you don't want to have to go off strip, you just want to stay local, uh, the casino spas are very nice. My favorite spas from having attended a lot of them. Um, number one, Caesars Palace Spa. Unreal. Number two is Aria, but it's gone up way up in price. So instead of there, I'd go for Bellagio as my next pick. Palm's Place is a very nice spot. It's much smaller and much simpler. 
in its offering, but it's got everything you need. Cold plunge, steam room, hot tub, um, sauna, outdoors, everything. And I've heard Mandalay Bay is also the bomb, but I haven't been. So I'll probably check that out this summer and, uh, you know, post some stories on Instagram or something. If you're looking for outdoors because you spent too much time in the casino and you realize that you need some of that vitamin D, um, you need some sunlight, you need some movement. Uh, Red Rock is a really nice place to go for a hike. But if you're like, it's too dry out there, I need something that's got some, you know, hydration, some water. Lake Mead is a great place for that. I went there this last trip and it's just the water there. So settling, so peaceful. So just don't forget the value of fresh air, sunshine and nature. Even though you're in Las Vegas, this stuff is available. You just have to plan to get away from the strip. And if you're looking for greenery, like some actual trees, um, the best dispensary I've heard of in town is called Bloom. B-L-U-M, but what I'm talking about is the trees that grow in the earth. And um, Mount Charleston is a really nice place to do a day trip to if you're looking for some hiking in the mountains in nature's. Um, other fun activities that I've done in Vegas that I think are great are go-karting, which is right next to the Palms, uh, rock climbing, movie theaters, which are also at the Palms, and I think the Orleans has one. Bowling is at the Orleans and the Gold Coast. Shooting ranges trampoline parks, uh, basically whatever you want, Vegas has it and it's all awesome. So just get on the Google when you get there or before you go, look for the thing you want and I promise you, Vegas has it and they have it at a very high level of quality. Now we're gonna talk about saving money. We all wanna save money. Inter Grim Poker asked about Wet and Wild. They got pool parties, man. Every hotel has pool parties. I think Hard Rock's probably your best bet for one of those or MGM Grand. In terms of saving money, you want to get the best rates on your hotel. You want to get the best rates on your car. Uh, look for promotional offers. Go through third-party websites. Do your due diligence. Take your time. It's worth it. In terms of renting a car, uh, also do it before. Don't uh, rent your car at the airport if possible. It's way more expensive than if you rent it away from there. And something I learned recently is Turo, which is like the Airbnb of car rentals, offers you way cheaper cars than any car rental place does. So I would definitely check that out if you're planning on staying for more than a week. Um, buy your food. The prices of food at the Rio in particular are unbelievable. And uh, the additional like gratuity charges and service charges and stuff are very high at the other casinos as well. So if possible, shop for your food off the strip. I'm a big fan of Sprouts, Whole Foods, uh, really good places to shop to get food. And also that way you'll know what you're eating. Uh, one of the easiest ways to ensure you're eating good quality and having tons of energy is just load up on high quality protein bars. Um, you know, some simple fruits, salads, nuts, and you're good to go. And then you can get your extra proteins, you know, your fish, your, your steaks, your chickens at the casino if you want, or you can go to a restaurant. This way you treat yourself, you get the good stuff, you get that pleasure food, but you also don't exhaust yourself from eating too much rich food. So if you can do, you know, two meals you prepped yourself or planned yourself and one restaurant meal a day, that's probably fine. And this way also you're really in charge of your food and your energy and what you're putting into your body. Um, Oh, by the way, if you're at the Rio and you're looking for uh, food, yes, we're live, Money Tron. Uh, All American Dave is great food. They got really great smoothies, uh, really great food. It's right outside of the Amazon room where all the action is. The only thing is it's very expensive and that is gonna cut into your win rate. So allocate, whatever you're planning to allocate for poker and stuff, allocate, if you're planning to eat at the hotels or casinos, allocate an extra $100 a day for food. If you're willing to go to the grocery store and get your own food, you can drop that down to maybe, you know, 20 to $30 a day. But really factor that in when planning your budget for sure, uh, or you'll be surprised uh, when you get there. Next thing to save money is just don't gamble big. Uh, gambling big can be costly, and also it causes stress. And that stress can lead to discomfort, which can lead to how can I get rid of this discomfort? And we'll think, oh, well, I'm in Vegas. Let me try to gamble a little away or go with one of the other temptations. Never a good idea. So gambling big causes stress, which causes leads to reactivity. So just be careful. Um, if you get weak, 
and craving temptation, that's where usually Vegas wins out. And the whole thing is to avoid the things that stress you out. The reason they have the bright lights in the casino, the reason it's so noisy, the reason they have the scantily clad people everywhere that are just like playing on your primal urges is to drain your willpower and exhaust you. So eventually you'll just give in to temptation and say, okay, fine, let me try it. And you'll see when you give in, it's not even all that good. It's not going to be as good as what you thought it was. So better to just, you know, prepare properly, Avoid the temptation. Don't spend more time in the casino than you need to. Don't spend time around people who are going to get you in trouble more than you need to. Put in your work, do what you got to do, and then get away from there to do the things you really enjoy rather than the things that they will try to pressure you into thinking you will enjoy. Yes, I've, I've done my things in Vegas for sure. <laughs> so finding your game first thing shop around town uh again i showed you guys the spreadsheet from spacey and kevmath it's at bit.ly forward slash wsop 2019 in capitals find your game shop around there's there's tons of places that are spreading poker and um tons of buy-ins tons of games everything to choose from uh, if one of the viewers wants to put the link in the chat. You know what? I'll put the link in the chat for easy access for you guys in case you didn't write it down before. Um, bit.ly forward slash WSOB 2019. There you go, guys. Okay. Um, I, I tried putting the link in the chat, but it didn't work. So if someone else can type it in, that'd be great. bit.ly forward slash all caps WSOP 2019. 19. Um, all right, next. What do you want to play? Do you want to play cash games? Do you want to play sit and goes? Do you want to play the World Series of Poker? Do you want to play other tournaments? It's all there. So cash games are probably the best value in Vegas. People think it's the tournaments, but that's just because they haven't played the cash games. The cash games are the best value. Uh, they're always good, especially around tournament time. The cash games are amazing because a lot of times people bust out from a tournament and they want to break even for the day, so they go play cash. Uh, people just played a tournament, got a little tilted, they want to play cash. People are exhausted from grinding tournaments all day, um, like this guy over here in the middle, and they're like, oh, I don't have enough energy to play a tournament today, but maybe I'll hop into cash games. So there's tons of easy money hopping in cash games that probably shouldn't be hopping in, and you can be there to collect it. Personally, I say I prefer to either play cash or play tournaments for the day because I find it's a different mindset for each one, and by sticking with one format, uh, I play my best while other people are jumping between not playing their best. Uh, next up, single table sit and goes are great value for people who specialize in it. Uh, the World Series spreads qualifiers like single table qualifiers every day. Um, 125s for 1Ks, 175s for 1500s, 225s for 2Ks, 2500s, and so on and so forth. Um, so those are really good single table winner take all. And also you can increase the buy-in without increasing the rake by offering last longer bets. So let's say you're playing uh, you know, 175 and you wanna get a bit more money in play, you could do a $20 last longer bet or a $50 last longer bet, bump it up to a 200 or a 225 buy-in, but you don't have to pay rake on that extra money. So that's a nice option you can add to the mix to get more value out of your uh, time at the table. Uh, then in terms of the World Series of Poker, it's the biggest fields, biggest paydays, some of the biggest rakes as well. Uh, they're at the World Series of Poker. Uh, and it's exhilarating to run deep. I made day five of the main twice, and I can only imagine what day seven or making a final table live feels like. So, I mean, if you're going for the rush and you're going for the dream, pick the event you want to play at the World Series of Poker and plan around it. Um, I've always noticed, though, from actually shopping around, that... The other venues have softer tournaments and nicer environments. I played seven years exclusively at the Rio because I'm like, I come to Vegas for the World Series of Poker. And I didn't realize what I was missing out on until I played my first Venetian event, until I played my first win event, until I played my first cash games at the Bellagio during the World Series. It's just a way more enjoyable experience. And if you're looking at things from a quality of life perspective and you aren't chasing that ultimate high, Venues like the Wynn and the Venetian are great alternatives to the Rio. And for small budget players, uh, the Golden Nugget Summer Series is the nuts. I had uh, the year I told you when I met Greggy when I was thinking about 
uh, quit in the game. And so I only planned to be in Vegas for two weeks. I stayed at the Golden Nugget. So I'm like, I'm going to play this series and then I'm going to play the main. And um, it was it was an awesome place. The, the, the venue is, you know, like a mini win kind of. And the quality of the resort is fantastic. So a really great place to stay and play. And apparently Mirage is also having sit and goes. So that's really good value. Anytime you can find... Uh, a poker game at a casino that isn't known for poker and doesn't spread a lot of poker, it's probably going to be a really good game. Hint, hint, Excalibur. Okay, saving time. This one, this is just one of those ones where planning ahead pays massive dividends. Um, there's a massive crowd that shows up the day of a tournament. Massive crowd. And if you want to avoid the crowd, um, just... Don't show up right before, um, you know, pre-register, late register, maybe not late register. It's still probably going to be pretty busy unless you like super late register. But the main thing is avoid the crowd because not knowing you're going to have to line up, showing up, getting stuck in a lineup and being around people who are complaining about being in a lineup is super tilt inducing and patience crushing. You're going to need that patience for the rest of the tournament. The rest of the day and you don't want to burn it up in the line so i like to either register the night before just drive in get it done um or wait really late and register late but just showing up right on time never works uh if you're gonna show up early i'd say at least two hours early if you want to skip the line and uh hey that's funny i actually know this guy in the far right of the picture um also, apparently they have automated check-in machines this year. I haven't used them yet because I'm still in Toronto, but I saw them in the latest uh, DNEX vlog, so those may be cool. Uh, and also cash out whenever. Just because you got knocked out of the tournament right now and you got your payout slip doesn't mean you have to go cash it in right now. Your time matters. Your quality of experience matters. Don't waste your time at the World Series of Poker waiting in lines. Spend your time doing the things that make you happy and get your money and, spend, and invest your buy-ins on your schedule, not on theirs. You have to be on the tournament's schedule all day that you're playing. Don't be on their schedule when you don't have to be, and you'll be much happier. Um, saving energy. Uh, by the way, Sheik, I saw your email, and I replied to it. Check your inbox. In terms of saving energy, first thing to do, set your intention. Diana Granu has an excellent philosophy on energy management and enjoying the game. And it starts with setting your intention. Why is this so powerful? Because it sounds like a whole bunch of woo-woo. Here's the thing. When you set your intention, you activate something called your reticular activation system, which tells you what's important to focus on. When you set your intention, you tell your, the rest of yourself, your subconscious self, what to pay attention to and what to ignore. If you don't set an intention you will pay attention to everything. Your attention will get pulled in every direction to whatever's the most stimulating, the most exciting, the most flashy, you name it. By setting your intention, you tell your subconscious self, this is what's important, everything else is not. And then it becomes easy to ignore the stuff that actually doesn't serve you in achieving your desired outcome. So what I say is set your intention, set it and forget it. And once you've set it, been firm about it and affirm this is what's important to me, this is why, the subconscious will guide you. You will get feedback about what is in alignment and what's not because when something is in alignment with your intention, it'll feel good. And when something is out of alignment with your intention, it'll feel uncomfortable, you know? You'll, you'll feel just kind of, you won't, you won't enjoy it. You'll get tense. And that's a sign that that's not in alignment. Um, also, don't be too strict. I used to set targets for my chip stack at the end of each break in the main event because it was a good thing to aim for. It really helps to guide. But I found that being too strict on that, too rigid on that would be if I wasn't quite at my target for the next break, I'd really push for it and sometimes make a mistake. So setting goals, setting targets is good for having things to focus on, for things to pay attention to. But in terms of, you know, how many chips you'll have, how much money you'll win in this cash game or this event, that's a little outside your control. So it's important not get too fixated on it. Set a goal to get yourself in motion so that you'll be doing the things that you need to do, practicing the right things to get the results you want, and then relax and trust that the universe is going to take care of the rest. And speaking of letting the universe take care of the rest, when you get signs that you are tired, take a day off. If you are too strict, too rigid, forcing yourself to perform, you are imposing on yourself, it's going to cause tension. 
It's going to cause resistance and that leads to all the bad hormones flooding your system and that's what doesn't feel good. You know what I'm talking about. It's not worth it to be on all the time and it will actually cost you in the long run. So take days off and do what you enjoy. Uh, Whether it's a hike in the mountains or a Las Vegas pool party, you'll thank yourself the next day when you're feeling more relaxed on the table. Pones TV has a great question. What if you don't reach your goal? Isn't it more depressing? And that's where process goals of I want to focus on doing ABC is more powerful than outcome goals of I want to have XYZ. Because we can't guarantee that we will have XYZ, but we can guarantee that we will do ABC. So if you set a process goal with the things you want to focus on, that's fully under your control. And if you don't reach your goal, that's on you. Whereas when you set up an outcome goal, that is outside your control. It's not on you that you didn't make your goal, but your mind will freak out trying to make that happen. Because when you say this is important, your mind does everything to try to make it happen. If it's something that's outside your control, well, you can understand why a lot of poker players have their heads spinning when they're wondering why they can't win that tournament that they wanted to win. What's up, Stop It Donk? Thanks for tuning in. Glad you're enjoying the show. So again, yeah, take those days off. Do what you enjoy. Um, Also, have fun out there. The World Series of Poker, Vegas, and poker in general are meant to be fun. So make sure you include time for happy-making activities. Yes, every kind of happy-making activity. Um, And then on top of that, be grateful. Just try it. Just try it. See what happens. Think about what you're thankful for. I've found over time that this is the ultimate hack to feeling good and relaxed. The human mind focuses on the negatives and what's wrong as a default. It makes sense. It's a survival mechanism. If you are aware of what's dangerous, you can avoid it. If you're focusing on what's good, you might miss something that's going to eat you, right? But by, but that's not serving you when you're just trying to feel good on a daily basis. And especially when you're in an environment like a hotel casino where there is tons of stuff out there that is actually a little dangerous and should be avoided. Um, but by consciously choosing to focus on what's good, and what's right, you will have a completely different experience of life. It'll be more enjoyable, you'll feel more relaxed, you'll feel more at ease because you're telling yourself, you're telling your mind, everything's okay, all is well, we, we just get to enjoy the show. Um, and having done both, focusing on the negatives and focusing on the positives, I can say firsthand that the, the focusing on the positives is a better way to experience life and it can be hard to reprogram, but the more you practice it, the more it becomes your default. And it's something I still work on every day, but every day I choose to focus on what's good and what I can be thankful for. Uh, I have a much better experience. I'm more motivated to do everything else and I enjoy every minute of my life that much more. 